Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. Today is a fantastic episode as we are talking about one of the most anticipated game books that I've seen on the internet for a long time, and I am super happy to have the author with us today. Hey everyone, you're joining me, your host, Max Fares, but not just me, the man who skips the gun, Konstantinos <laughs> Dimopoulos. Thank you for joining me, mate. Lovely being here, Max. Thank you for having me, actually. No, we've been talking about this for a while, and as I mentioned, your book, well, as of the release of this podcast, is now out, and... I'm super excited. As I mentioned earlier, it's been what I've seen on Twitter, online, on other websites. Definitely one of the most anticipated books, especially in the level design community. And I can't wait to talk more about it with you. I, I really hope it, it proves to be as anticipated as <laughs> I too feel it is. And absolutely love talking about it. It's been quite a few years that have been poured into the thing so yeah well for sure and you've got so much so you were kind enough to send me over kind of a preview copy which i've been reading for the last week and a half now and i must say that i do love it we spoke a little bit off off air about what i like about it so much and we'll talk about it in in the in this podcast mate but before we get into this i kind of want to talk about a bit about how you got into games and kind of what your role is because that plays a huge part into your book itself so do you want to explain about your your role within the video game industry first sorry mate sure sure so i mean essentially i was i was actually trained to be you know a, a city planner a, an urbanist and geographer so this is this is what my phd was mm. about what my engineering studies were about and what roughly 10 plus years of my life were devoted to. This was always in parallel to a general interest in games and maybe, you know, writing about games, you know, in places like um, indie games or Rock Whipper Shotgun for a while or, uh, you know, Gamma Stra. I, I enjoyed writing semi-professionally about games. And then, you know, at some point following the, the crisis of 2010, at least in Greece, when an academic career became, you know, completely unattainable, mm. I sort of tried to, you know, move into games in a more professional manner and start, you know, working and designing and doing levels and, you know, maybe get some game design and writing. And eventually, you know, I sort of realized that merging urban planning and, and you know, the, the sense of space that we are trained to understand. Yeah and merging that with a sense of space in games and bringing, you know, the ideas of uh, actual planning and combining them with the needs of game design and yeah. level design would be at least a novel thing to try and see yeah. if people were interested. So that's sort of what I do. I mean, I actually design and, and, and describe and analyze cities in and for games. Yeah, mate. And for those who don't understand or, or know about kind of game and urban planners, they're very crucial to helping level designers figure out the spaces and the environment artists understand the splitting up of districts, how they flow together mm -hmm. and the balance you have to do because coming from a, a traditional background to come into games as you know, like think about optimization because we've worked with, well in my career I've worked with like former architects yeah. and one of the things that they've talked about with the, the struggle is you can build these long roads but in games you have to break that up due to you know loading, streaming stuff in and kind of make sure that you keep that in mind but it, your role is so crucial to helping to helping us as, as level designers make better and more believable cities it's, it's such an important role that isn't spoken about enough really in my opinion mate in my opinion too <laughs> to be honest <laughs> so the truth be said is that i i do feel that you know people from outside gaming that actually want to, to enter the gaming um, industry and you know be creative within gaming they should also take the time to you know familiarize themselves with the concept of gaming and the needs of gaming like for example what you mentioned the long boulevard you know in a city it's it's something that i've been mentioning to students and, and people in you know conferences and everything that like try and bend your roads for example it's like and this is good in games because you you know always you imply more than you show and you also save so much on you know gpu and cpu power mm. so when you combine disciplines you actually have to combine them you don't have to just bring your stuff into a new region and see what happens you, you have to sort of try and yeah. fit in no man i agree but first Let's have a quick word from today's sponsor. 
Today's sponsor is none other than me. What I've done everyone, and I hope you're excited for this, is I've actually created a level design kind of store. What I've done in this store is put up different kinds of tips and tricks that you can find there, whether that be my actual ebook itself to that of level design pamphlets focused on different things such as traversal, stealth, breaking into the industry, as well as different talks that I have done which you cannot find anywhere else other than on this store. So if you are looking to improve on your level design skills and processes, then check out the Level Design Store, which will be down in the description below where there'll be a link to find this. All you need to do is head over to gumroad.com forward slash level design lobby. I hope you like what you see and I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Thank you and now back to the show. I guess what games got you into video games? What were some of your favorites that inspired you? I think that my my favorite my, my favorite game of all time has to be the second Monkey Island. Uh, okay, yeah. And yeah, it's I'm, I'm quite old. old. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that I'm getting old, but it's not getting, I've gotten old already, so I'm just getting older. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do love Monkey Island too, and, and I always loved, since, you know, since a teen, I, I, I loved my, you know, RPGs and adventures and, yeah. you know, more, you know, storytelling games in cohesive worlds where you sort of, you know, had that feeling of being there, of being actually immersed, even, you know, by a, an ancient DJ CRT mm. monitor. So, I mean, my first games, the first games that I remember loving were those ones. The first games I played must have been, I don't know, Berserk on an Atari 2600, something like that. Wow. And that was zero. That's crazy, mate. And look how far we've come from there, mate. Amazingly so. It's, <laughs> it's, it's really impressive. Though, admittedly, if you think about it, sometimes, you know, limitations, and we still have them. You obviously look much better than I do. I mean, limitations do bring forth a very unique kind of clean and very defined creativity. I mean, you really have to think in a very particular way. And that's always interesting. I agree, mate. I think sometimes there's nothing more scary than the whole blank canvas mm. where you don't have limitations because that can just be horrifying in its, in its own right. Absolutely. It's, you don't know where to start from. You don't know what to tackle first. Yes, mate. It's, uh, it is a weird one. But speaking of canvases... Let's actually now, let's get into the actual book itself, mate, because I, like I said at the beginning, I really love this book. I've seen so much anticipation. I, I backed the book when it came out. Well, I can't remember when that was, like two years ago or something now. And I've seen a lot of people talk about this in anticipation. And mm -hmm. as I said to you, like offline, I really do love this book. The amount, as like I said, the amount of detail you've dug into, not just how the, the maps are built, but also the kind of story behind that would be why it defines their structure, their pathing, you know, the, the inhabitants of this area. And I guess my first question is like, what inspired you to go and make this book? Well, I think that there's several things. The first one is like an obvious interest in, you know, and love for uh, video games cities. The second is, you know, this, I, I have this sort of passion for, for old atlases and the idea of an atlas in general, you know, like mm. there's this sort of book that you open up and it's not, it's not like a tourist book, but it sort of war makes you want to visit the places it describes. It's like, it's a bit vague. It's a bit, you know, suggestive. It uh, doesn't come with photographs, for example, or, you know, precise topographic maps. It's like this love of this thing. And then there's this, you know, the fact that we have been friends with Maria Kalikaki, the, the artist. We've been friends since, I don't know, since the early 90s, probably. And that is almost, I don't know, 30 years. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Which is like, and we, we've always wanted to do something, you know, major together, something big. So, you know, an illustrated book was something where we could combine the things we, we sort of are good with. And then, you know, there was this discussion going on with Unbound about a book of regarding citizen gaming, and it sort of somehow all got combined into virtual cities and into making an atlas for the cities of gaming. And it, I would say that it does tie in with my older scientific approach where I was more of a geographer and less of a planner, so I was more someone who tended to critique planning than, or actually, you know, engage in it and then critique it, but also, you know, the, the critique of planning and also the critique of, uh, you know, virtual cities and mm. maybe, you know, this need to reimagine them in their entirety. I think those 
inspiration sort of got combined into into virtual cities. No man, it's it, it all came together wonderfully, and I wanted to speak about. Oh, thank you so much, really. No man, I, I I really did enjoy this, and I'm going to be keeping this close by as one of the books I refer to moving forward in my in my career. You've got so much incredible detail, and you spoke about teaming up with your friend to work on the illustrations, and that's something I wanted to ask you about because the fact that you've got so many different cities, and we spoke offline about how you divided up the book to be fantasy modern and uh, mm -hmm. futuristic am, am, am i missing a section am i missing a section well, it's, it's those three, those i was gonna say it'd be embarrassing if i did but we, <laughs> <laughs> but you you've divided that up really nicely and each game that you've taken from has obviously got its own art style so how is it that you two decided what the best look would be how did you discuss that i think uh, I just wanted to have, I mean, what, what I told Maria that I would like would be, you know, something that would be not very detailed, let's say, and, you know, with a common and cohesive uh, technique, perhaps. So it's, uh, what I wanted was like to have a cohesiveness throughout the book, but also styles that would show off the uniqueness of its place. And I think that she came up with, uh, you know, ink drawings and ink colorings as a solution. Yeah. And, you know, for, for every city, I sort of provided her with... Uh, how would you talk to a concept artist? Like, think of that. I mean, did you say, okay, this is the description of the place. Those are some reference images. And those are some things you could perhaps combine or get inspired from. And from there, she would, you know, come with a few sketches we, which we would uh, see and then refine. I was pretty pretty hands off in that regard. I mean, I mostly gave the, the description and then, you know, okayed or, or not the sketches. Admittedly, mm -hmm. it was a much more work than any of the two of us had anticipated. I mean, the book has something in the area of, I don't know, 120, 130 illustrations, which is just a lot of work. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot of work. But it's, uh, yeah, it, it worked, it clicked. And thankfully, when working with friends, things tend to be easier and nicer. So that, that, that helped a lot. Yeah, well, it came out so well, and I like the kind of with the illustrations, the the overall like aesthetic of the book, because you you referenced Atlas's earlier, and I love that it kind of has almost in a sense that uh, that weathered feel mm -hmm. where you know someone has gone all around these cities as if they're real places, and because of that, that book has that kind of feel of it's been on an adventure as well in terms of presentation. I really do, really do like. That. I'm so glad you get that. Yeah. And you get that and you get that feeling too because the idea is that i mean as you've noticed it's like it's always from an in-world perspective that the main description yes. comes from there so i'm always you know sort of imagining someone writing this down with with a friend or perhaps the, the same person also you know sketching what they're saying yeah. and trying to lure other people into into visiting those places while also you know occasionally explaining some things and, and detailing stuff that might interest actual creators and, and, and world builders no i think it captured that so well mate as i said like it really felt like the book had been on a journey as well so i i think it really captured that yeah. to me mate. And, and this is also down to unbounds excellent designers admittedly mm. i mean they the publisher did a, did a wonderful job you know both in the design department and in, in editing i mean they they caught quite a lot of mistakes and helped me you know rephrase stuff and you know fix things and everything so it, the support from from the team of, of the book was amazing Brilliant. so yeah that has to be said no it's and it all came together so well mate and I, like i said i i really enjoy it and I, I can't wait for others to get their hands on it you know when this releases because it i think it is going to be a fantastic addition to <laughs> anyone's book collection on, on games I, I really hope so I, thank you seriously i haven't i haven't touched it yet to be honest so i'm really looking forward to yeah getting myself on a finished copy yeah well th this is the thing because we were speaking a bit about like working on books is you know yourself is, is going through those phases <laughs> where like like yeah this is great and then oh is yeah, this great i think it's a loop you sort of i mean you go from oh god it's terrible yes. to okay this is amazing then to okay people might you know put up with it and, and you just you go around this loop until you you've seen it <laughs> We read it and it, it, it really is really it really feels a lot like you know working on a game mm. the analogies are there for sure mate and, and you know that too i mean you, you've you, you've done the same thing with your book well <laughs> I, I think you're just spot on like anything creative and you spent 
as you said, multiple years on this as well. For me, it was, it was, I think for mine, it was eight months, but for you to spend multiple years on yours, yeah, I can only imagine the kind of constant circle and self-critique and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I don't know, but I really wanted to see how people, I mean, your reaction is excellent. It really makes me happy. <laughs> I really want to see how everyone, I mean, at least most people react to that. I hope it's positive. As positive, maybe that would be amazing. I think it will be, mate. Honestly, I, I think it will be. And there's a, there's a lot to digest, mate. Honestly, in a good way, in a great way. Excellent. At Lover Design Lobby, we believe everybody has a story to tell. Hobbyist or student, freelancer or veteran, we made it our mission to unite those who share our passion for creating and developing great games. Thanks to our generous Patreon backers, we've been able to do just that. So if you've already pledged your support, thank you. If not, you too can ensure the future of Level Design Lobby, helping us to create even more exciting content, collaborations, interviews, and much more. With awesome perks and rewards, whether you're a seasoned professional or just getting started, you're sure to find something for you. Want to share tips, tricks, and advice with passionate, like-minded developers? Our awesome community Discord has you covered. Fancy practicing your level design, creating strong portfolio content, and having fun? Then try our level design weekends. Or perhaps you want to individually discuss your work, hone your skills, or level up your career. Then consider our one-on-one -on -one mentorships. If you share our vision, then go to patreon.com forward slash level design lobby for more information and to pledge your support. Thank you. And I want to to ask a bit more with the with the book of because you you can't do every virtual city in the game in in the gaming world, shall we say? So how did you choose which cities you were going to focus on? Well, the idea is that I tried to balance things as much as possible. So I tried mm. to to have cities across platforms and eras and you no know, themes and game genres and everything. So try to you know at least have one racing game. Try to at least have, I don't know, two or three 8-bit games and try to have an RPG but also something from a console you know, something like that and sort of space it out as fairly as possible while also trying to, you know, showcase the evolution of city building throughout gaming up to a point at least. And of course, you know, by, by focusing to the cities that I, I really enjoy and, and which I consider like mm. really important and I mean, I, I many would argue that would take from Monkey Island 2 is not necessarily a defining city in, uh, in in gaming and they would probably be right but you know this is like for example a completely personal choice that look no i want to write about that so uh, that is going in and then you know also making certain that there are, there's an equal representation mm. uh, at least a decent representation of indie gaming and you know smaller games and weirder attempts yeah. so it was mostly a balancing act between stuff i already consider you know of high quality and worth engaging with on a deeper level mm. That's great. And then with, with that, then what were some of the challenges once you selected these games and these areas? Like, what were some of the challenges in, in, in digging deeper to these? Well, the, the first one is the fact that, you know, as we've also discussed before, the fact that the games take a lot of time to play through. Mm. And especially when you're, you know, when you're taking notes and yes. trying to really understand how things click and how things work. I mean, just trying to get Grim Fandango's actual geography on a sketch was maddening because you know you have all those weird static perspectives and there's nothing no 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 pretty model to zoom around and at least get yes. it. but you know this is one of the challenges actually time and then you know trying to to look a bit and do some research deeper into the game and read interviews from the people who worked on that and see what reviewers said and see how other people react to that maybe and try to realize what made people care but all those things but essentially what it all boiled down to is you know with each game after after a certain point in research I sort of got the feeling that look no okay now I have the complete thing in my mind and actually getting there getting to the point where you can actually imagine the the whole city that makes everything easy I mean you just have to get to the point where, where everything clicks to you you know in a special way and you realize okay okay if I were there I would look ahead and see that and then I would have this area on my east and this area on my west and when you get that then mm. just you know writing it down is the, is the easy yeah. part 
No, mate. It, it sounds like such a... As I said, you've gone into so much depth, so the, the research sounds like it must have been a long part of this book as well. How many cities did you do in total? I didn't count them, but there was quite a lot. 45. 45, 45 wow. Yeah. And that's... I mean, especially the first ones. The, the first ones took, took months. It's, and when I'm talking about months, of, you know, it's, it's like crunchy months, mm. like 40 hour week months. They took a lot. But, you know, after a while you start getting, I mean, you, your mind gets better at, you know, interpreting things and instantly, you know, getting relations. And, and then sometimes you had the opportunity to talk with the people who created the, the cities or, or the games. And they are incredibly helpful in, in you know, really, for example, in, in uh, Ubisoft's BAT, like this, this old uh, Amiga and DOS game, which is sci-fi. I mean, talking, talking with uh, Brad, the creator, and having him tell me that look, this has was deeply inspired by Paris. I mean, this instantly helps you, you know, conjure the, the space of boulevards and you know, Osmanian uh, facades and everything. So they really help. But uh, research did take quite some time. I can imagine, mate. I can only imagine that. Like I said, there's a, there's a lot that's gone <laughs> into this book, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad it shows. I mean, to, to be honest, <laughs> I wasn't ever certain it would. Well, I mean, I think, like I said, the amount of detail and, and like love you've put into this is shows and getting getting the chance, as you said, to reach out to certain creators and to you know pick their minds. It, it all comes through in the end, mate. It all comes through. Oh, it's I mean, you, you really help lift my spirits up because it's like <laughs> this weird pre period. But it's it's fantastic to know, fantastic to to hear that. Honestly, like I said, I I really enjoyed this book and I'm looking forward to, to talking to others about it when they get their chance. Like I spoke to a few friends that I work with and they've got it pre-ordered already or are looking to buy it on release day as well. So as I said, I do think a lot of people in the, the community are very excited for this this book, mate. So honestly, I, I, I hope it doesn't disappoint really. I hope it doesn't. I don't think it will, mate. I don't think it will, but it's, yeah, I also hope yeah, I, I mean, I understand your your worries, but honestly, mate, I, I do not think it will. But until I understand, until it's out there in people's hands, you're yeah. always in the back of your mind. That's true. That's true. That's true. And I wanted to ask, kind of, when you're doing this research, was there a particular game or city that you know was your favorite to to research on that you kind of learned more about? Well, actually, I would say that Anor Londo from Dark Souls was was the one that I I was less comfortable with initially due to me being pretty mediocre at this kind of game mm. like um, i'm not the greatest sword master of anything <laughs> right. but you know actually putting the time in and enduring and trying to convince myself that this is something that has to be done you know yeah. it actually helped me realize how how impressively well built this the, the city was i mean it's the fact that the difficulty of the design is an essential integral part of the experience because it's the only way that you will get to pay attention at the, the amount of granularity I don't know the detail that's been put there for you to see and interpret essentially as you want that that was that was really really eye-opening for me and you know same thing applies to, to Bloodborne but uh, it was less of a shock because it actually followed Dark Souls but it's I, I think you know actually coming to to engage with types of cities I've never worked on or I've never really paid attention attention to like for example the, the city in a, in a racing game those were actually the, the two Dark Souls slash Bloodborne games were the more eye-opening ones oh man it's, I think the fact that like you said you've picked so many variety of cities in these virtual worlds it's a lot to take in and how they relate and how obviously they, they don't because of different genres but also different designers different time periods but yeah my, my personal favorite reading through for, for me was in it was in midgar because i recently completed the final fight 7 remake so i was like oh okay like, i really want to see what you have here and then when you, you spoke about doing research about the history how midgar had changed and then the upper class moving up to the upper plate and all of this kind of detail about it again of just how the the people moved around because although we may see some of that, we don't see much of the overall, just your average citizen in Final Fantasy VII, in my opinion, because the game's so focused on the bombastic adventures and the, you know, the, the planet in danger. But to see, again, just how normal people lived, it really, like, opened my eyes to a different perspective that I hadn't thought about. So it was really incredible to, to read that part, mate. And, and admittedly, it was quite, you know, incredible for me when replaying uh, Final Fantasy VII. You know, it was incredible to actually notice that there was care put into that. Like, people had 
actually thought and decided what you know the average person would look and feel and act like and you know and, and decided to to you know instead of given this completely bleak and cynical touch to everything instead it's 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 in a way very hopeful and very you know human and stuff so because when you approach a city to analyze it or to reimagine it or to you know really see what goes into it like you start noticing all the details and it's it's impressive that they are there They're, especially in the case of Midgar it, it's such a well constructed place that was used I mean for a really bombastic RPG which is fine so that's good it, it was, was I mean this is another game I still haven't finished actually and I'm not talking about the remaster. I mean, I'm talking about the, the original one. I've, I've had it for like 20 years. Well, the the interesting part, I think, with uh, Final Fantasy VII and Midgar is when you break it down, you don't spend a huge amount of time there. Like, you, you know, you spend possibly up to the first disc, if I'm remembering correctly, and then you leave. And there are, I think, a couple moments where you maybe revisit. I think you, 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 you go back there in the end. Yeah. But uh, as you're saying, like, it, like have that much detail and care for a, you know, for a section they they eventually leave is like, like you said, just impressive. Now, mate, we're gonna wrap up this episode. So, is there anything you want to say about the book or talk or highlight before we end this episode, my friend? Well, all I can say is that I hope people like it, and I hope that people get the fact that this is this is essentially an atlas. I mean, there is something meant to inspire you and lure you in. I'm also hoping that, you know, the, the more designer-focused bits will prove to be useful to, you know, world builders and, and creators. But other than that, no, I, I am just looking forward, I think, to, to hearing what, you know, people will have to say and what the book will make them feel and whether it will inspire them and stuff. And obviously, you know, all sorts of criticism is something I'd like to hear too, you know, probably, I don't know, come up with a second volume at some point or, you know, redo the first one. Nah, I wouldn't redo the first <laughs> one, but I would probably do the second volume. <laughs> Anyway, well, for those of you who do want to get the book, we'll put a link down in the description below where people can pick it up. As well as, do you want to tell people your Twitter name so they can reach out to you and share their thoughts on the book, mate? Absolutely. It's uh, in Twitter. I'm at uh, Gnomeslayer, which is great name. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's from an ancient blog of mine. It's G N O M E S L A I R, and my personal site is uh, GameCities.com, GameScoreCities.com. And yes, I would absolutely love to chat with people and, I mean, not just in the book. No, I'm generally chatting, especially during the lockdown period, which we are slowly re-entering. Yes. As you say, well, I will put a link to all of that in the description down below for everyone. So you can go just click reach out. And as I said, get the book. I do recommend it because I'm absolutely loving it. There's still parts that I want to go through and explore more of, but I really do recommend for anyone who is interested in level design or just excited about getting to know games in more detail, this book is a fantastic addition to your library. Thank you so much for the kind words and, and the time, absolutely the time you, you put into this chat of ours. It's been an absolute pleasure, honestly, mate. Like I said, we've been waiting and wanting to do this for a while, so I'm really happy we have able to do it, mate. <laughs> This is lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much again. So if you want to get in contact with me, you can do so on Twitter, which is at Max Pears, or email into the show with any questions that you have, which is leveldesignlobby at gmail.com. And we will catch you all next time.